everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a mixed media project. Now, before I go any further, I do want to encourage you to definitely watch this video because if you are new to mixed media or maybe even haven't tried it yet, but are thinking about trying mixed media, I want you to really take this project in, into consideration because it's easy. I'm not going to be using very many supplies in this project, but we're gonna make a really cool mixed media tag showcasing the new Tim Holtz color, which is saltwater taffy, and I'll also be pairing it with some of his other newer colors. I'm going to be using a mixed media tag and also a paintbrush that I got from the hardware store. We're going to create a color study of the new color and also pairing it up with the other colors. You can see how these work really well together. So to start off first, I want to paint my paintbrush. This is a basic paintbrush, nothing fancy about it. And we're going to go ahead and start by painting the wooden handle with the new saltwater taffy color. Saltwater taffy is a really nice corally pink. It has a little bit of a salmon tone to it. It's very cool for beachy themed projects, which I'm really excited about because I love the ocean and I love the beach. And I particularly liked how it paired with salvage patina and kitsch flamingo. So I painted the brush and I'm gonna set that aside now and work on creating paint that's going to sit on the bristles. And to create my faux paint, I'm going to use texture paste and the new Tim Holtz Saltwater Taffy Distress Paint. We're mixing the paste and the paint together to create a nice thick substance that's going to dry beautifully on these bristles. I'm using a palette knife to not only mix that paste, but I'm also going to use that to help spread it onto my brush. And I'm just working slowly here, a little at a time, because I want this to look like there is a nice dollop of paint on the end of this brush, like somebody had just dipped it into some paint and was going to start using it. So I'm going to maneuver the paste around and really smooth it out as I finish applying it in the general shape that I like. Smoothing it out is gonna help it look more like paint once this dries, and that's going to take quite a bit of time to dry. So we're gonna leave that aside and start working on the background of this project. And the background is a base of the Tim Holtz Etc. tag. This is the medium size. And because I wanna put a bunch of color on this, I am going to cover this with some white gesso. So I'm going to cover it twice because I do want this to have a really nice white opaque finish. So I'll put the first coat on and then after that dried, I added a second coat. Now Distress Paint has a tendency to resist anything you put on top of it. And knowing that, I wanted to make sure that I put a clear coating on top of the paint after it dried, so that way I could add some spray and other colors to it. So that was just some collage medium that I'm applying a finish over on top of my Distress Paint. And now I'm gonna bring in Distress Spray Stains and start spraying my paintbrush. I want this paintbrush to look like it has been worn, like somebody has used this brush for forever. And it's a really cool effect. So the Distress Spray Stains are going to dry really nicely on here. And I'm going to not only use them as a spray, but I also splattered them as well by taking the nozzle off and using the end of it to splatter that on. So my etc. tag has completely dried at this point and we're ready to start spraying this as well. So I'm going to use salvaged patina, saltwater taffy, and kitsch flamingo to spray this tag with all these beautiful colors. Now sprays, of course, are fluid, so that means you can move them and manipulate how they look on your tag or any other piece you're working on, even if it's paper. So as they're still wet, I'm picking this tag up and I'm going to just kind of move it around and allow those paints to flow across this background. It looks really cool too as they start to drip. I'm going to bring in salvaged patina next because I do want that color to overlap with the pink and the coral of the saltwater taffy and kitsch flamingo. And this will create some other nice colors in between, which I really love. To get a bit more movement, you can also use some water to help spray the paints and then allow them to slide further across your project. And the white gesso is going to allow these to move very fluidly, but then they'll also dry quite nicely. They're intense right now as we're applying them, but these will dry back and won't be quite so harsh 
Although I do like this look, it would have been way too much to have all these vibrant colors this intense on my project. So I really am glad that they dried back so that I could get some nice, beautiful color behind my paintbrush, which is going to go on top of this tag. But in the end, it's going to allow that paintbrush to shine because there's nothing too exciting behind it that's going to compete. You can also move your colors around with your finger. Don't be afraid to get messy. It's fun to be able to put your fingers into the paint and manipulate it. If you don't want your fingers to actually get messy, you could, of course, use a glove to protect your hands from getting stained. So now that my tag has dried a bit, I'm going to start taking more of that Distress Spray Stain and we're going to start first by splattering the tag with some of this color. I love splatters. I think they add a lot of fun texture to your projects. Distress Spray Stains are, of course, water reactive, so which means you could go ahead and splatter water, just like I'm doing right now, over top of this tag and then dry it up so that way it'll create those nice water spots. Just like Distress Inks and Distress Oxides, Distress Spray Stains are just as reactive. Now that we have our background put together, we're ready to start adding some other embellishments and elements on this tag. So my thought was is I wanted to have a lot of color swatches and similar colors of the shades that I'm using today in my project to kind of create that color study effect. So the first thing I thought of was adding some swatches of, let's say, paint. Of course, we made that texture paste with the saltwater taffy paint and that created the effect of paint on my paintbrush. So I thought I would make that same kind of swatch effect over on the left hand side of my tag using that same technique of mixing the paste and the paint together. And so now we have some paint swatches, so to speak, of the saltwater taffy, kitsch flamingo, and also salvage patina. Now I couldn't find my Kitsch Flamingo Distress Paint, so I used spray instead, and that worked just as well. So if you don't have the paint, you can totally color your paste with the sprays too. And I really loved how this stencil from Simon Says Stamp was perfect for creating these swatches. It had this trio of circles. And I have the stencil linked below in the video description or over on my blog if you're interested in knowing that exact stencil. But I found it so helpful for creating these swatches and that way I had nice clean edges too so that I could apply the paste right through that stencil and then just lift it off and reveal these really pretty swatches. So these are going to dry. I wanna make sure that they are dry before I do anything else. So we're gonna go back to the paintbrush again. When I made those swatches for the background, I had some leftover paste that I had wiped onto a paper towel. Well, I had thought to myself, I think it would be cool to have some texture on my paintbrush to further enhance that look of paint staining the brush. So I'm gonna pull that paste off of that paper towel and start dabbing it onto my paintbrush and it's creating this really great worn and super inky paintbrush. It looks absolutely fantastic. It literally looks like someone never cleans their brush, but that's what I wanted and I loved how this turned out. So this paste will dry hard and it'll look really good on top of that brush. I also wanna clip a little sign onto my tag here. So I pulled out a Tim Holtz large clip and I'm going to just rub a bit of paint onto this. I'm not worried about having this look perfect. I'm actually looking for it to have the effect of somebody accidentally got paint on it. I'm also pulling out mummy cloth and the saltwater taffy distress spray stain again. And I'm spraying the mummy cloth with that spray stain. Then I let it dry and I came back in with some salvage patina. And this is really gonna mostly be a blue mummy cloth, which I'll use as a topper for my tag. However, it's going to have that peak of saltwater taffy here and there. And I absolutely love how salvage patina and saltwater taffy mix together. It creates like this dusty blue, it's really pretty. So I'm gonna use my heat tool to help dry that up a little faster. I pulled out some of these fabric remnants from Tim Holtz. These are just these little like tags and they're made from fa canvas fabric. It's really neat. And I thought it would be fun to write a color study on this. And I just kind of played around with some handwriting prior to committing to my piece here. And once I got the look I was going for on some paper, then I went ahead and actually wrote it down onto that fabric scrap. 
I also wanted to create some literal paint swatches that I could have hanging off of my tag. So I freehand cut some little rounded squares. I wanted them to intentionally look imperfect and I just colored each one of them with the distress paint. I didn't have, again, my Kitsch Flamingo paint color, so I actually grabbed Pick Raspberry for the last shade on my t little swatches here, but I actually really liked how this color ended up adding a nice bright pop of pink, so I'm good with that. I went through my button stash and dug up a bunch of different buttons that I thought paired super well with the colors in my tag here. So I'm gonna hot glue those onto my project in different areas. I'm adding some over to the paint swatches and then I'll have a trio of them coming down on the right. I wanna glue my paintbrush onto the tag as well and I made sure I used hot glue for all of these things because one, it dries fast and two, it's also gonna hold really well. I do have this butterfly adornment I didn't color it, I liked that metal effect really nice and it added another area of metal to go well with that binder clip up top. So I just glued that straight down onto my paintbrush. I absolutely love how that binder clip looks like it has paint stuck on it. So I have the little reinforcer that comes with this media tag that we've been using as our background for the paintbrush. And I had painted it with saltwater taffy after adding white gesso to it. And while the paint was still wet, I sprinkled some saltwater taffy embossing glaze on top of that reinforcer. So it's only grabbing on the wettest areas of my reinforcer, which is mostly just around the edges at this point because I did let it dry quite a bit. But that adds some really neat texture. And then the other thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of collage medium here and there around the reinforcer. And what I'm gonna do now is take some salvaged patina embossing glaze, sprinkle that over top, and anywhere the glue was sitting, that's what's going to grab onto the embossing glaze. And then I can just heat set that and we'll have some really nice other color texture, that dusty blue showing through on certain areas of our reinforcer. So I attach that also with hot glue over top of the hole on the tag. Now I can go ahead and thread my mummy cloth through the hole and tie it around the top. That adds a nice little ribbon topper to the top of my tag, which looks nice and pairs well with the colors that we've got going on here, especially that dusty blue. You can see that in certain sections of the background and I even used a button that had that same color tone. I pulled out some twine here. This is just some May Arts twine. It's for natural thread. And I'm going to thread my little paint swatches that I had punched a couple holes into. We're gonna thread those up and then I'm also going to tie the other end of my twine here so I can make a loop. And then I'm gonna hang this entire piece over one of the buttons on my tag. So this is just gonna hang here, it looks cool. We have some really neat swatches to go along with the other swatches on our tag here. And this completes my mixed media project. This would look so cool in your craft room. That's where I'm gonna be putting mine. I'm gonna keep it in my craft room. First off, these are some of my absolute most favorite colors, not just of Tim Holtz's distress colors, but favorite colors in general. I love coral. My favorite color is teal. And so this tag is literally everything that I love about these types of colors. And I'm going to absolutely enjoy having this in my craft room to look at for a long time to come. What I love most about this project is that it's easy. If you have never tried mixed media, this is a project that I think you could really find yourself enjoying and getting some really nice practice using these types of products. As you can see, I didn't use a ton of different items. I mostly used just the new distress color and some other distress colors to go with and very few additional elements. So this is very simple and easy to do. I hope you enjoyed. I also hope you'll try it out. And I can't wait to see what all of you are gonna be making with the new saltwater taffy distress color. If you're interested in getting the color, I do have it linked below in the video description along with everything else that I used today in this video. So be sure to check that out. If you haven't already subscribed, I would love to have you do so because I do share inspiration frequently and I wouldn't want you to have to miss any of my upcoming videos if you'd like to see them. So thank you so much. I will be back soon with more to share. But until I see you all again, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Bye.